Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Welcome to all our Epic Conquerors, and thank you for joining us once again on our Epic Conquerors podcast. Mama Jay, today we have a special guest with us that we're going to uh, interview and chat with as we begin our brand new series, which is Finishing 2020 Epic Strong. Woo! I am Epic Strong. You are Epic Strong. Yes. All of our Epic Conquerors, we're going to finish this year Epic Strong. Epic Strong. Well, Mama Jay, maybe you want to go ahead and introduce our guest for today because not only is she a guest, she's an intricate part of everything that's done on the Epic Conquerors podcast. She's a sister, a daughter, and everything else. And a mother, (laughs) not yet a grandmother, but a mother. (laughs) She doesn't want to be a grandmother yet. Okay. (laughs) Too early. (laughs) Yeah. Liette is very special to me. I've known her for a lot of her life, and uh, she's actually one of my spiritual daughters, an adopted daughter, I call her. Uh And she's really an integral right-hand part of all the ministry things that we do in Epic Conquerors and everything else. So it's a real joy in this brand new mini-series that we're doing to finish out 2020 Epic Strong (laughs) to have Lee join with you, Chad, and myself to just talk about what did we learn in 2020 that can carry over into 2021 so that we finish strong. Ooh, yeah, I love it. That's going to be an, this is going to be a great series, Mama J, based on everything that's been going on. So I'm going to jump right into it. And uh, so Lee, we, when we we're, we're just running through some of the notes and some of the comments that you provided, and uh, to start off, it says you wrote down it said 2020 started as a year and the beginning of a decade with high expectations, which were unexpectedly dashed with the global pandemic affecting billions of people around the world the devastating effects in communities and homes till at this very moment. However, the relentless spirit of overcoming is evident. Wow. So that's, that's a, that's, you know, that's a great way to frame the whole conversation right there. (laughs) It is interesting when you just said that now that you wrote there, Lee, that it was the beginning of a decade. What a way to kick off a new decade. (laughs) So I think we should maybe change this series, finishing 2020 strong, epic strong, but finishing this decade epic strong. We got nine years in front of us still. What do you guys think? Yeah, we take these lessons and we can definitely finish it epic strong for sure. Yeah. Well, we've de- we're off to a start. And like you said, there's a lot of things that have been learned through this process. I mean, not everything, even though it's been... Uh, a topsy-turvy year and things have been upside down and good is bad and bad is good. And it seems like we're still in that phase, unfortunately. But yeah. even in the midst of all that, right, as believers, we can still, we still learn so many amazing lessons. And mm-hmm. in many ways, these are the times that really help us extend and grow in our faith. So yeah. I was wondering, with that said, uh, Lee, like, you know, we're going to dive into what were some of the most meaningful moments that happened to you in 2020? Yeah. Well, on reflecting, I was just thinking there's so many lessons I think that we could learn from this, you know, the preciousness of family, um, you know, what's important, what's not important, all these kind of things. But after a while, after just thinking about that, I think I managed to kind of have my top five (laughs) of lessons learned, which I really felt at the end of the day was um, like a mind shift almost, you know, on how we used to do things, how we used to think about things versus how we should think about things going forward. So, yeah, I kind of made my top five, which I was hoping we could chat about now. It'll be really cool, definitely. Absolutely. Mama Jay, why don't we, uh, why don't we jump right into number one? All right, Lee, you put number one, we can do nothing without him. And I True think we story. have totally <laughs> all proven that out. And that's yeah. why we love our, um, what, epic means everything's possible in christ Christ. we really discovered that this year we can do nothing without him and you chose a scripture chad maybe you could share that scripture in proverbs 3 that she chose for this and then we'll chat about it yeah it's a proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 that says 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Exactly. Yeah, 100% true. And uh, I mean, I was just thinking when, when we realize we can do nothing without him, I mean, just personal experiences that everybody had, you know, from having a regular routine to, you know, taking kids to school, going to work, sitting in traffic, all that kind of stuff, literally overnight came to a halt, you know, where does your help come from? Where do you, you know, and, and that forced us literally to realize that everything really, we have to trust him to get us through. And I'm sure you guys have heard, but I know I've heard so many miracle stories of how in that time, you know, people were provided for, people were reunited with family and friends, you know, all these amazing things happened. And that is a big lesson for us now, obviously going forward, that literally, no matter how well we planned for 2020, <laughs> you know, all our hopes and aspirations and goals, it was not in the plan, you know, of, of the universe, of what Jesus had knew what was coming this year for us. So in the same breath, I also wanted to say, um, just from our experience, uh, if I can relate about Cam, um, Cam has been a very active, hands-on teaching ministry within many spheres of, you know, churches, denominations, but already Jesus had prepared us for this time, I felt, because everything was online. So as the pandemic hit, Cam could continue. We went online, we had, you know, training, we had um, book club. It was just so incredible that that ministry could continue, that was there, it was a hand to hold during this whole time. And that was Jesus. We could really do nothing without him this time around. So that was just a really big personal on my side lesson learned that I just felt if we can keep in that vein going forward, man, we're going to be epic strong. (laughs) (laughs) It is true when you say that, Lee, because we didn't even skip a beat as far as that went. We were already positioned to go with everything online. We'd already worked out the kinks in years prior. And so it is God looking ahead and making provision. But I had to laugh when you first started saying your comment just now i mean who would have thought that the whole world would be scrambling for toilet paper back in march when this pandemic hit and even that when i got down to my last roll and there was none anywhere in the stores god provided so even in that you can do nothing without him he thought of all the details even, exactly <laughs> even to the toilet paper he's got you it's so funny that you talk about that mommy day even that feels like a lifetime ago I know, we're right? Going through that process, right? Yeah, it's hard to remember it even, and it just eludes us, but it just made me think of it again the other day because with the unrest that's currently going on in different countries, you know, the scripture talks about wars and rumors of wars and mm-hmm. all that's going to happen in the last days. But I thought, well, we'd be scrambling for toilet paper again. Maybe I should stock <laughs> up ahead of time. Yeah, toilet paper with gold. <laughs> so- Who knew? <laughs> So, oh, so, man. Lee, that was, so that was your number one what we can do yeah. nothing without him and i think yeah. like you said that's become pretty evident as we go through 2020 you know no matter how many i remember mama jay and i at the beginning of the year you know well more my side going yeah 2020 and, and, all stuff, <laughs> and having everything planned out and you know kind of like mapped out how this year's going to go and that was in january and obviously you know march came around and that all went right out the window yeah. <laughs> we came to realize that unfortunately he's the one who guards us and he's the one who you know yeah. commands us and shows us and you know leads us down the path and uh, many times we have plans that we put together and desires of our hearts that we want to achieve and goals that we want to get but at the end of the day like you said we can do nothing without him so that's become that's pretty evident in 2020 beautiful. so yeah. number two says what we consider important is not really Hmm. Wow, yes. let's, let's, let's unpack that for a minute. For real. Well, I'll, I'll read the scripture. It says um, in Luke, for example, Luke 12, 27 to 28, look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make, clo- make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory wasn't dressed as beautiful as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the flowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he certainly will care for you. Why do you have so little faith? <laughs> so, I think again with with everything being locked down, and um, just again from a business perspective, I think a lot of our epic conquerors can relate to that. Business decisions that you made pre-COVID, 
versus business decisions you made post-COVID. You know what I'm saying? What was important just all of a sudden became not important anymore, you know, and your, your attention had to shift into something that was really truthfully important. And for me, the scripture kind of sums up what we said just now. You know, obviously we can do nothing without him. But again, just that mind shift of why am I concerned about the clothes that I need to wear or the money I need to make or the sales I need to make or when this thing hit, it was like, oh, wait a minute, communication is way more important. Um, you know, connecting with clients in this way was more important. So, so many things changed. And it was, this scripture for me kind of summed that up because, you know, he provided for that already. He, he made, he gave us technology that can allow us to connect when the world was shut down. We could still reach out and see each other and connect that way. You know, obviously the touch wasn't there, but the, the sight was there and, Business could continue and, you know, all those kind of things. So for me, this that really was very, you know, a big aha uh -huh <laughs> of 2020. And again, taking that forward, you know, using this almost as a plumb line. Okay, so in this decision that I'm making in my business, in this decision I'm making in my family, you know, on my time, is this important really? You know, if the world has to shut down tomorrow, <laughs> is this important kind of thing? Um, I think that was a really, really big lesson learned, yeah, in 2020 for sure. I think that's a good point about how the technology was there for us to be able to stay connected, even though it's virtual, at least we mm. can see people and that's very important, right? We get a lot of yeah. emotional tank refueling from eyeballing one another <laughs> and getting a feel and look at their face, their countenance, are they well, are they okay? And at least that was in play. And I think for me on a ministry side of things, so much in the body of Christ, we always seem to be behind the eight ball when it comes to new things coming up and around. And this literally forced the body of Christ to get more comfortable with going online on online. things. And I thought that was pretty epic, actually. <laughs> what about you, Chad? What did this change your perspective? I mean, I think, like you said, just so many different things that showed up, um, you know, things that we were just things that were taken away, like we took for granted, you know, just being able to go to the movies and being able to visit people and just, I think the touch and the, just being able to touch people and being the, in, in people's presence and their communion and all the rest of those things. It's just amazing how fast that could be whipped away from us. And I think one of the biggest shockers was just, you know, how all this happened in such a, in, in a split second, but like we know, you know, Mama Jay was talking about it, you know, nothing catches God off, off God. Like he had already seen this coming way before when. And it was, it, was, it was amazing to see how, you know, people really still, like you said, still communicated. We had the technology. And even with regards to people not being able to go to church, I mean, you know, people were going online. People were exploring new avenues. They weren't, they got out of their box because everyone was so used oh, to just being so up in important. The yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think what it did is like people really started to perhaps explore their spirituality and go down that path in a different way and realize like, all right, well, I'm not going to my, well, let me look at this. Let me see that. How's this going to empower me? And, you know, I think a lot of things came out of it and obviously spending a lot of time with your family because that's the close family helped you to grow and nurture those relationships. So I think that was, you know, some of the stuff that really came out of it. That's so awesome. Let's jump into number three, because wow, we got so much ground to cover here. And it's so good. Number three on your top five was peace that surpasses all understanding. Uh oh, let's go for that one. Yeah, well, the scripture there is do not be anxious and worried about anything, but in everything, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, guys, <laughs> present your request to God. And the peace which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's the famous Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Lesson learned with peace that surpasses all understanding. The whole world seemed to be in chaos. I think our social media feeds were full of, you know, alerts and sad news and drastic things that were happening. But for many of us, we just felt at peace, like, you know, as it felt almost like we were under the radar and just sliding through under this. Each day that we went through and overcame, it was just a peace that came with that. And uh, I think, like Chaddy said earlier, you know, when when we, the, the word ministry seemed to have a new definition during this time, and when people were pursuing their spirituality, the 
prayer was like automatic. You know, people were, I think, more in prayer <laughs> during this time than ever before. And that really did bring that sense of peace, um, you know, in spite of the world being in chaos and in spite of everything that seemed to be happening around us, for sure. Well, and I know for, you know, not only was the COVID a factor and the whole world turning upside down a factor, but that really impacted everybody on personal levels with their work and issues like that. And I think like for yeah. Chad, you really have gone through a gamut of upsets in your personal life and business and so on and so forth not only due to COVID, but just due to unscrupulous people and <laughs> different things like that. So in your experience in this 2020, to have that peace that surpasses all understanding, I mean, there were moments, of course, where we all, at times, our peace escapes us for a moment. But just now that you are where you are in Christ, knowing how to bring that back, talk to us about that a little bit, because I think there's still so many in our Epic Conqueror community that are still under the fire, if you will, outside of COVID, add that to the package, you know, it's a lot. So yeah. how did you like harness that to bring that piece back for yourself? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a crazy year, Mama J, with all the stuff going on besides the, the pandemic that, you know, just came out of nowhere. And with that, you know, obviously there's certain parts of our business and organization that were closed, that, you know, could no longer continue viably. We had, you know, it's like you mentioned, some unscrupulous people. So there was a lot coming out, a lot coming at me constantly. And I mean, there were moments where it felt like, you know, you were just going to cr completely crack, yeah. you know. And, uh, but the reality was like when I think the biggest part for me is that through the journey of the last 10 years, which has, you know, had its many ups and downs, looking back and looking at how God's hand was on you or on me and, Epic Conquerors, you can look back in your life and you can see how he pulled you through all these other situations that were taking place. So when you look back and you go, wow, because it's always difficult to see it in that particular moment, but you draw strength and you draw faith by looking back at the miracles that God's already done in your life. And even though you're in the midst of the fire, you can stand on that going, well, God's the same today as he was yesterday and he'll be in the future. And if you did it then, he's going to do it now. So you just use that to center yourself on the peace and basically, at some point, you just hand it over to God and say, you know, let your will be done in this process. Woo, that was so good. Oh. You know, because it is important that we understand that all the feels, our emotional part of ourselves really wants to come and bulldoze us and take over and cause us to get into alarm and panic and, you know, totally flip out. But when we understand that it's our feels trying to, uh, overreach its boundaries <laughs> we have to like call it back and say hey my spirit's large and in charge Jesus yeah. is still in the Lord and King of my life and back up feelings you know I'm going to walk in the peace of God so I think that's so yeah. powerful that we know we can do that and um, I think that's a powerful part of that peace that surpasses all understanding and I'm really just to give a shout out to Chad really proud of his journey this year uh, you've come a long way, dude. <laughs> <laughs> awesome to see how you have been able to harness that this year through all the ups and downs you've gone through. But top five, number four, was One Day at a Time, which oh. always makes me think of that old song we used to sing when I was Thank a girl. You. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. <laughs> that's all time. I'm asking. Yes, that's all I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you want to share the scripture for us there, Chad, on at least number four yeah. of her top five. So one day at a time. And like we always say, that's really what we have, right? One day at a time. Anytime we go past that, we start to uh, get a little nervous. But Matthew 6, uh, verse 34, it says, Therefore, take no thought about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take thought about the things of itself. Sufficient, sufficient to the day is the trouble thereof. So... That's, you know, that obviously just to paraphrase what's going on there, as always, God saying, hey, there's, tomorrow's got its, it's got its own problems and we're going to deal with those problems tomorrow. But right now, you have enough grace, you have my grace, and I'm going to watch over you and make sure that today you're going to be taken care of and just focus on this particular moment. Say as close to me as possible, walk with me, and know that I've got your hand for today. Tomorrow we'll deal with later. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to 
drag everything from yesterday and we don't want to project into tomorrow and bring that onto the load and then bring today's troubles as well. That's just way too much for us to deal with. So that's such great wisdom that Jesus gave. Uh, take no thought. Yes. And so that's another discipline that we have to do because our thoughts, like our emotions, want to run rampant and just take over the show. And we have to dial it back and go, whoops, I'm not going to think about that. That's for tomorrow. <laughs> think about what I've got going on right now. What was your thought there, Lee, when you wrote that number four? Yeah, it's a, I think in, in a similar vein to what you said, Mama, um, during this time as well, I think because we had such a mind shift happening, you know, if, if we lived in the past, if you like, you know, lived in the past, I think a lot of time would be spent regretting, you know, being disappointed, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. And living in that space, you know, is really, I feel robs you of this, of these moments here. Yeah. But the same about the future, like, oh my word, you know, this is going to happen in the future. What's going to happen in the future? And then not enjoying this moment now and like almost, I think, missing out on opportunities and taking risks, but good risks, you know, because you're nervous for the future and you don't know what's going to happen. You're not going to do this. You know, you're not going to allow yourself this, that type of thing. So uh, this scripture for me just became so alive. It was like, well, here we are today. Sure, you know, yeah, we, we're all in the same house at the same time, but man, let's make it fun. And I know a lot of families like, you know, really connected again because they allowed themselves to, you know, they didn't have work to run to, school to run to, plan for this, plan for, you know, the, the soccer game next week, all that kind of stuff sort of halted and actually allowed people to just focus on now. And I think that was a very precious lesson. And I'm really believing that we can all take that going forward because that is, for me, the scripture like screams that. And that's really what it's about. And realizing that there's so many opportunities and happy moments and memories that we're missing out on if we're focusing on the past or the future. Oh, that's so like, good. Today. <laughs> Sorry. I remember last year, Chad, <laughs> some of our biggest uh, listening was on our episodes where we did uh, how to deal with getting off the hamster wheel. <laughs> <laughs> And this was a year of reset and pause and reflect. So that is a good thing. One day at a time. Sweet Jesus. And then number one, five. Yep. One day at a time. I like that. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Sweet All right. Jesus. Number five. To the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. Wow. The you want to read that verse there, Chad? And then let's hear what Lee has to say on that. To the ends of the earth. Romans 10, 17, verse, verse 17 to 18. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. Thank you, Jesus, for technology. <laughs> 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 because I think that, that has been the most epic change or re reality check or whatever. Ministry really has a new definition now. It's, it's literally to the ends of the earth because of technology. And the scripture for me, their sound has gone out to all the earth. I mean, that's exactly what's happening. How many cool online meetings have been happening? You know, the word has been echoing and resounding throughout the world uh, because of technology. And so this part about to the ends of the earth, literally we're able to do that now. I mean, yeah, I'm sitting in South Africa chatting with you guys in the United States. Uh, you know, we've been connecting with people all over the world, Australia, everywhere. It's just been so awesome. And the sound is resounding and the word is going forth and ministry has a new face and a new name and a new look. So it's really been so epic. And again, if we can take this going forward, oh man, how epic strong can we be for sure? It is funny that in our humanity, we always try to like put ourselves in a, in a place where we feel comfortable and we box ourselves in. But something like this has really just blown the box apart and, it's actually been a good thing on many levels. So what do you think, Chad? Um, I'm, I mean, I got to agree with what, what Lee said. It's amazing. Like if you go back and when you, when you think about it, when it said, you know, that before Jesus came back, the word would have to be known and spread and the gospel shared all across the world. And if you think back to those times, it was, wow, what a daunting task that would be. Like, how would you ever get to everyone on the planet? I mean, these, some of these, you know, like we've, seeing mom and dad when we go to some of these you know seminars and that but some of these people that live up in the you know the mountains or in the jungles and everything like that but we live in a time today where it's truly possible and it's almost been done where every single person on this planet is going to have the opportunity to hear the gospel and i think that's just incredible 
that that's possible. And then on the other side, just incredible because we know Jesus is close. <laughs> Whatever that yeah. means, he's a lot closer today than he was then. Woo-hoo! One day closer, sweet Jesus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but if I, if I can just hop in and say what, what, what's really awesome about this, Teddy, you were talking just now about, you know, uh, going to seminars and seeing people in remote villages. Before it was always left to, the mission team or, you know, a, a handful of people to reach the ends of the earth. But now all of us can, anyone can. And I think that's the miraculous reality of to the ends of the earth for us today, for sure. That's true. Wow. We always would put our $10 in the offering for to send a missionary to go to Timbuktu or something. But now we can all go to Timbuktu from our own home. You know? yep. Or even in our car, we can put on our phone and we can be anywhere in the world. So. Yeah. So, I mean, with you, with that, what, so what, what would you say, um, what would you say worked well in 2020 for you, Lee, and that you're grateful for? Like, um, I, for, for me, just that the mind shift, I think the mind shift of coming into that place of peace, peace is so precious for me now, you know, in 2020, it's such a precious like treasure, you know, like I'll do everything and anything to maintain or keep that peace because I know in that peace that surpasses all understanding. Then I know Jesus is in control. And cause I mean, then I, I mean, I'm not doing anything. So he's in control. You know, I know that what's important is done and dealt with because I'm at peace. Um, you know, uh, and everything is like the one day at a time that's taken care of because I'm at peace. So for me, really the peace that surpasses all understanding is the biggest treasure from from 2020 that I really want to take forward and be epic strong in. Definitely. Yay. Yeah. There's, power, there's power in peace. That's for sure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's a gift from God almighty. And you know, Jesus paid a big price for that, which I think it's interesting how the enemy in this year has attacked everything that Jesus did on the cross the peace of mind he's trying to infiltrate us with fear, 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 with the healing thing with COVID, you know, and then try to actually take out the church uh, and the voice of the church by closing it down, locking it down, putting pastors in prison and whatever, if they do open their church, God forbid, and have a few people there. I mean, it's just that which Jesus paid for us to have everything on the cross this year. He's really like pulled it all out there, but he's going to find out that he's going to be a loser just like he was when he thought he had Jesus successfully nailed to the cross and found out uh, uh, that's not the end of the story, dude. It's not the end. (laughs) (laughs) That's what we're believing for in 2020 strong, finishing epic strong. That's right. With the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. You know, we have our spiritual weapon that we spotlight. So let's all just quickly, uh, what would be your spiritual weapon Lee that you would choose for, this particular episode in light of what we've talked about. I already said it, but I'm going to say it again. It's peace. peace. All right. <laughs> that surpasses all understanding. That peace. That peace. God's peace. Yes. Yeah, the peace of God. <laughs> I think that's a good weapon. I'm going to pick joy because if we'll keep the joy of the Lord, that's our strength. It gives mm-hmm. us the ability to function and keep on keeping on, which is so important because I tell you what, so many people have thrown in the towel this year, sadly. And for our epic conquerors, we just pray that you just give yourself wholly to Christ and let him uh, guide the ship because you will get to the other side because God is in you. You're more than a conqueror. Chad, what would be the spiritual weapon you would choose? I'm going to have to go with uh, Lee and I'm going to go with peace. I think All right. <laughs> peace is power. And I think yeah. what God's peace is power. And when you get that peace settled deeply inside your soul, um, there's nothing You're unshakable. Up. Yep. Unshakable. Yep. Unshakable. And I think this year has really been about that because everything's shaking. It's still shaking. <laughs> We're going to be shaking for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so if, you, if you don't have that peace of God, then it's like, you're like a ship without a rudder. Yeah. yeah it's, it's tough for real. Yeah. So. Beautiful. All right. Our epic power affirmation. Of course, we always say our battle cry, which is I am epic. But we're going to add our power affirmation, which is, I am no longer a slave to worry and doubt. I am Mm -hmm. epic strong. That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. But you know, our epic conquerors are used to us kind of elongating our power (laughs) affirmations lately. So I think we can do it. I am no longer a slave 
to worry and doubt. I am epic strong. So that's mm -hmm. what we're going to do. So let's do our drum roll, everybody. And then on the count of three, we're going to shout out, I am epic. And then I am no longer a slave to worry and doubt. I am epic strong. Here we go. Drum roll. Yeah. One, two, three. I, I am, am epic. epic. I am, I am no longer, longer a slave to worry, worry and doubt. I am I epic am strong. strong. <laughs> <laughs> With all of our little mini second time lapses in between us, it's going to make for fun listening on the podcast. Oh, thankfully, we have Leon here who takes care of polishing this whole thing up and making it sound awesome. That's so, right. Yeah. As always, and all her outros and everything she does on our videos on Facebook and everything mm -hmm. and uh, YouTube and all that. We appreciate you, Lee, so um, very much. You're such an integral part of this Epic Conqueror podcast. And all the community thanks you for all the work you do to make us all be able to get the word of the Lord and stay epic strong no matter yeah. what year it is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Until sure. Jesus comes. Sure. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Chad, why don't you wrap it up? You're so good at that. What would you want to wrap us up for in this particular episode? Um, I just, I mean, I, I want to wrap it up just thinking about, you know, the things that like we discussed right now and how grateful we are for, you know, for that peace that transcends all understanding to be able to actually tap in to that piece that Jesus paid such a big price for mm -hmm. so that we can stand on his word. And when we're going through these situations like that, we can be epic strong because we know whose we are. And we know that like Mama J always says, you know, the battle is real, but the victory, the victory is assured. It's oh. assured. <laughs> so with that, we know we're epic strong. There you go. Epic strong. And on that note, we're all going to say, Oh, no. no.